Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now it was about a year ago when we last took a look at an AFOX graphics card, namely the 4GB GTX 750. This is one of or possibly the only 4GB 750 non-TI graphics card and despite its low end status the extra VRAM still helps it when it comes to gaming. AFOX actually reached out to me after that video review and asked if I wanted to take a look at another entry level GPU because they're still going straight and offering their own versions of well not only graphics cards but motherboards, CPU coolers, memory and SSDs. This time we're taking a look at the 6500 XT. Now I know how some of you feel about the 6500 XT but seeing as it seemed to escape scalpers and is dropping all the time price wise it's certainly worth considering for all of you 1080p gamers out there. That said, we all know the limitations by now. The 4 gigs of VRAM, the 4 PCIe lanes, lack of hardware encoding. It's a GPU best suited to PCIe 4.0 systems, but like any card, partners and third party manufacturers will still produce and sell their own versions. So if you are considering one of these, is the AFOX version worth considering too? Well, let's talk about that. As with the 750 I tested in the past, I like the branding and the look of the card itself. No frills black design with a couple of fan stickers and a red Radeon logo up top. For me, someone who likes plain and simple design, this passes the aesthetic test. As with all 6500 XTs, we've got a single HDMI and DisplayPort output and the card is powered by a single 6-pin connector. In the box, we've got a little thank you note from the marketing team, which as a product reviewer is always nice. It's a nice touch. It's hard to read out here, but I'll have a look at that properly later. There's also a quick installation guide, which is always helpful for first time builders. And there's a pamphlet that showcases other AFOX products. I really had no idea they made all this stuff. The card can be overclocked with no effort. AMD did limit OC potential, so it's a matter of just maxing out all the sliders in Afterburner. It really is that simple, you just open up MSI Afterburner and max out both of the sliders that are movable. That, that is it. We should see a little bit of a boost in games by doing this, which will of course vary on a game by game basis, but there's no need to worry about temperatures. This AFOX 6500 XT heats up to around 60 degrees at most in games, even with the frequencies at their respective highest. The dual fans switch off at low load and start spinning at around 50 degrees if you don't set a custom curve. As a whole, yeah, it's fine. AFOX, like any manufacturer, can't do anything to overhaul more critical opinions of the 6500 XT as a whole because this thing underneath is still a 6500 XT. You either like the existence of the GPU or you don't. But at least the heatsink and dual fans on this model do allow us to squeeze as much performance out of it as possible. So this card can and will offer an entry level experience as good as any 6500. It doesn't sound like a helicopter taking off either, which is always a bonus. And it's nice to see AFOX still putting out their own versions of GPUs and other hardware. Let's check out the gaming performance of this now overclocked card then, starting with Battlefield 5. I'm using an i5-11400F system running in PCIe4 mode, along with 16 gigs of 3200 MHz dual channel DDR4. This configuration will allow us to get the most out of the graphics card. I've been playing a lot of Battlefield 5 recently. I tried playing some older Call of Duty games and I just end up getting destroyed. There are still people playing Modern Warfare 2 from 2009 by the way, but everyone's a seasoned veteran so I just end up being absolutely decimated. I like to think I'm not too bad at Battlefield and thankfully the game runs really well on the AFOX 6500 XT, averaging 80 FPS. This is with the high settings. The 1.1% lows are pretty decent as well, and overall this frame rate is enough to stay competitive, while the visuals are also good enough to mean the game still stands up to a lot of newer titles. Seriously, I can't believe how good Battlefield 5 still looks in 2022, and there's loads of people playing so you can still jump into a game at any given time at the moment as of this video, and yeah, enjoy it. There's, there's plenty of people playing it and it still looks great, runs great, and it's still worth a play. In Cyberpunk 2077, the card benefits from FSR mode. In this case, 
it's set to quality. FSR renders the game at a lower internal resolution and upscales it so it looks better than just dropping the native res from the in-game options menu and for entry level GPUs like this one, well it's ideal. I was quite surprised to see a 60 FPS plus average all in all, though there are some dips and drops here and there. We are of course using a best case scenario PCIe 4.0 system and this GPU makes a lot more sense when using a system that supports this, otherwise the performance can be somewhat crippled, especially in Cyberpunk here. Elden Ring hit the in-game frame rate cap at medium. I thought I'd go for a nice quiet stroll through the otherwise deadly countryside, but one of these fellas decided to go and get the boys, and all of a sudden I found myself involuntarily taking part in a deadly game of tag. This game looks good at these settings, though I did disable a couple of options, which were motion blur and depth of field, I believe, as a personal preference because I cannot begin to describe how much I dislike those settings. Fallout 4 is older but still popular, at least I'm still having a blast. This one hit the cap too, which I left enabled to avoid running into any weird graphical glitches. I disabled the cap before and found myself inside another NPC's head. Yeah, the visuals got weird. The high preset does the trick for a solid 60 frames per second and despite its on paper problems, the 6500 XT can be quite a solid performer at 1080p in a lot of games especially when inside the right system. The AFOX version here is no exception. Forza Horizon 5 did incredibly well with over 100 frames per second. Medium settings are best. I did try high, but the 4GB VRAM limitation hindered the percentile lows, though it was still playable overall. These performance figures are from this specific race, so things may vary in different locations, and of course, lower settings will increase the performance metrics. That said, I don't think turning the visuals down is really necessary, nor is implementing a frame rate cap or anything like that. It ran really well and looked really good here. Forza Horizon 5 is incredibly well optimised and even lower end cards can run it just fine, providing you manage your expectations. Finally, it's Red Dead Redemption 2, and we exceeded 60 FPS here again with the console settings at 1080p, or the Xbox One X equivalent settings according to Digital Foundry. I ran around Saint Denis as usual, causing chaos, and things held up fairly well. Overall, the AFOX 6500 XT has done a good job today. It's nice to see that this company are still making products like modern graphics cards because the last card I tested was already old when I bought it. It was a 750 that was being sold new here in the UK, but of course the 750 had been out for a long time, so I don't know how long it was sitting on the shelf at the shop that I bought it from. It's always nice to take a look at something from a manufacturer that isn't as well known, and I hope you guys all enjoyed watching as well. If you did, well, leave a like on the video down below. If you didn't, leave a dislike, even though I can't actually see the amount of dislikes, but there we go. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one, when I've actually found something that I never thought I'd find for a price I never, never thought I'd find it at. So yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks again.